Why do you have to count? What is the reason? What are the instances that you have to count? If you don't know the song, right? You should see you looking like you're in headlights. If you don't know the song, how it goes, the style of the song, if you're playing with someone else, if you're playing duets or a choir or you're playing in an orchestra and someone hands everybody a piece of sheet music, the only way they're all going to play it the same is to know the time values of the notes. So if I write a song like this and I give it to each of you, you might play it and it'll sound like this. Right? Some of you might do this. Okay? But it really sounds like this. <laughs> See? Now you would have never known that if because all those notes look exactly the same, don't they? Alright. So what happened is they, Giuseppe, remember back in lesson one? He decided that after he got everybody in the choir organized and they were reading the notes, that he better give those notes a time value, how long to hold them. So at the beginning of every piece, there is something called a time signature. And it looks like this. You see two numbers stacked on top of each other. Um, sometimes it says 3-4, sometimes it says 4-4, four, four. it can say 6-8. Uh, there's other numbers too, but you, as beginners you're not going to see them very often. So this is called 4-4 four, four time. Alright? What the top number always means is that there's four beats or counts in a measure. And that's a, that's a, a measurement of time. A measure is the distance, remember, between two bar lines, right? So the distance between two bar lines is called a measure. So each one of these measures you'll count to four. They say a good musician knows the alphabet from A to G and how to count to four. <laughs> Pretty easy. Okay. You might also see three four, which means there's three beats or three counts in a measure. Now what's the definition of a beat? How can you tell if your heart is beating? Boy, you guys are really quiet today. Uh, are you scared? <laughs> okay, if I play this. Okay. How would you define what you're hearing? Rhythm. It's a rhythm. What else? If you go like this, what are you feeling? Your heart beating. Your pulse. It's the pulse of the song, right? Okay, so take your foot.
are not forgiving, you better be on the beat. Because you only get one chance in a measure. If you're a beginner, you want to stick to 4-4 four, four time, which is everything else. All the other rhythms are 4-4 four, four time, except the few 6-8s. But 4-4 four, four time is very forgiving because you have two chances. One and three. So you can be off a little bit and it's pretty easy to get back on. Okay? All right. The bottom number in the stack of numbers tells you that the quarter note gets one beat. One beat. The quarter note looks like this. All right? So three beats in the measure, the quarter note gets one. Four beats to the measure, the quarter note gets one. And just for information purposes, you might see this occasionally. Six beats to the measure, and the eighth note gets one. We're not going to go there, because I did last time, and we didn't get very far with that one. All right, this is a whole pie, right? And a 4 4 time, the whole pie gets how many beats? Four. four. This is a whole note. The whole note gets four, four counts. All right, so in a song, the whole note, if you start with that measure, that gets one, two, three, four. Hit it on one and hold it. All right, if I cut the pie in half, now instead of one whole pie, what do I get? Two half pies. Okay. <laughs> two half pies, just ignore it. Two half pies, half notes get how many beats? Two. Two. If I cut that pie in half, a half note looks like that. It doesn't matter if the, if the stem goes up on the right or down on the left. The rule is if the note is above the B line, the stem will go up on the right. If it's below the B line, the stem will go down on the left. Okay? All right. How many counts does the half note get? Two. Two. All right. If I cut the pie again, now instead of two halves, what do I get? Four quarters. Quarter note looks like this. All right. It takes how many half notes to make a full measure? Two. Two. All right. And it takes four quarter notes to make a four beat measure. All right. What number am I missing here? Three. Three. That's a half note. Anytime there's a dot after a note, the dot equals half the value of the note. So the note gets two, the dot gets one. So the total is three. It's called a dotted half note. Okay? So this measure would have a dotted half note. And so that's three, right? What note would I have to put after it? A quarter note. Kind of like a math class. All right? And then I'm going to have my quarter note measure right here with four of them in it. All right, so let's count this. Four, four time. So we're going to start here. And when the number comes out of my mouth, that's when I'm going to hit the note. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? That's how it works. Now, each one of these notes also has a rest, equivalent rest. If I say rest, that means what? Don't play. All right, this is a quarter rest. This is a half rest. It's, it's a little box that sits on top of the line. In Wisconsin, when I learned it was a bag of corn, if the bag of corn is sitting on the fence, it is half full. This is a whole rest. If the bag of corn is full, it will fall off the fence. And that's a whole rest. It means don't play for four beats. So a dotted, a dotted one would look like that. That would mean don't play for three beats. 